Daksun Milita Miena Tasmai Shri Vive Namaha Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prastaya Bhutale Shri Makti Vakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvasesa Sunyavadi Pastyatya De Satarine Manchakalpa Tarubis Cha Kripa Sindhu Bareva Cha Anitanam Pavane Vyo Vaishnave Vyo Mahona Maha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasari Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Okay. One, two. So this is a where this um, week starting yesterday on the tenth of September is the focus. Worldwide within the ISKCON society is glorification of the holy name. So this is called Holy Name Week. It comes up every year, but it's more than a week. It's actually two weeks starting yesterday, the 10th, and they're going all the way up to the 23rd. So in honor of that, <clears throat> Most of the classes will be, primarily all of the classes will be centered on some aspects of chanting the holy names through kirtan, japa, various verses that glorify the holy name. It's meant to help us get inspired to get involved with some programs centered around the holy name, which are happening all over our movement at the present time. Okay. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Yatri Dhyante Takata Mrishtas Trishnaya Prasamo yataha naivaram yatrabhute shu nod vego yantra kaschana. Translation. Wherever, whenever pure topics of the transcendental world are discussed, The members of the audience forget all kinds of material hanker hankerings, at least for the time being. Not only that, but they are no longer envious of one another, nor do they suffer from anxiety or fear. Okay. Vaikuntha means without anxiety, and the material world means full of anxiety. As stated by Prahlad Maharaj, Sada Samugdhya Diyam Asad Grihat. The living entities who have accepted this material world as a residence are full of anxiety. A place immediately becomes Vaikuntha whenever the holy topics of the personality of Godhead are discussed by pure devotees. This is the process of Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu, chanting and hearing about the Supreme Lord Vishnu, as the Supreme Lord himself confirms Naham Tishnami Vaikunte, Yoginam Ridaye Shuva, Tatratistami Narada, Yantra Gayanti Madbhaktaha. My dear Narada, 
actually, I do not reside in my abode, Vaikuntha, nor do I reside within the hearts of the yogis, but I reside in a place where my pure devotees chant my holy name and discuss my form, pastimes, and qualities. Because of the presence of the Lord in the form of transcendental vibration, the atmosphere, the Vaikuntha atmosphere is invoked. And this atmosphere is without fear or anxiety. One living entity does not fear another. By hearing the holy names and glories of the Lord, a person executes pious activity. Srinvata Svakata Krishna Purnya Shravana Kirtanaha. Thus, his material hankerings immediately stop. This Sankirtan movement started by the Society for Krishna Consciousness is meant for creating Vaikuntha, the transcendental world that is without anxiety, even in this material world. The method is the propagation of Shravanam Kirtanam process throughout the world. In the material world, everyone is envious of his fellow man, Animalistic envy exists in human society as long as there's no performance of Sankirtan Yagya. The chanting of the holy names, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. The Prachetas therefore decided to remain always in the society of devotees. And they considered that to be the highest benediction possible in human society. So, uh, yeah, the verse is interesting. It says that when people get together to glorify the, the all supreme personality of Godhead, uh, their uh, feelings of envy disappear. And uh, one other point, if you bring back the translation, we can see. Um, the audience forgets all kinds of material hankerings. So this, this uh, glorification of the Lord congregationally would devotees coming together and enthusiastically focusing on the glorification of the Lord is the spiritual world. You should, you should understand that. It is not the material world anymore. This, the material world has been purified and transformed into the spiritual world. Wherever there's glorification of the holy name of the Lord in congregation with others. Or in glorification of the holy topics related to the Lord by the pure devotees. The place, as Prabhupada said, immediately becomes Vaikuntha. Now these are not just nice words to somehow or other glorify the process of devotional service. These are actual exact understandings of what is taking place. The spiritual world actually descends into the material world by the power of the glorification of the Lord's names, fame, form, and qualities. These things are none different than the Lord. And therefore, wherever the Lord is personally present, and especially wherever he's being glorified, that place becomes the spiritual world. In, in this particular purport, you'll find this verse, Naham Tishtami Vaikunte, Yoginam Ridyeshuva Tatra Tishtami Naradahi Yantra Gayanti Madbhata. Now, the Supreme Personality of Godhead is speaking to his pure devotee. And he says, I don't reside in my abode, Vaikuntha. I'm not within the heart of the yogis. Where is it? Where do I, where can I be found? Well, I can be found only in that place where pure devotees chant the holy name, my holy names and forms, pastimes, qualities. It's interesting. Is the Lord saying he's not in his abode? He's saying that. Is he in his abode? He sure is. He's there. Is he in the heart of the yogis? He's there too. 
but he's saying he's not there. So what is it? He's saying, don't look for me there. If you really want to find, find me, you can find me or you can experience my presence wherever my devotees take glorification of my name, fame, form, qualities, and pastimes. That's where we should look for the association of the Lord in that arena of pure sound vibration. And when it's done by pure devotees, then the world, then it becomes Vaikuntha in a very realized way. It becomes the spiritual world automatically. Even if it's done with devotees who are not pure, still it has the element of Vaikuntha. But when it's done with the pure devotees who only know Krishna, who life centers around the glorification and service of Krishna, then that place is spiritual, purely coming from not part of this material world. But we should understand that point, it's very important. Uh, so therefore, the whole process is to glorify the Lord. Satam prasangam mama virya sam vido Bhavanti Ritkarna Rasayana Kata Najosida Natvartmani Bhatir Bhatir Anukamishyati. that verse from the third canto explains that when the devotees come together and glorify the Lord and speak the speak the glories of the Lord, then that's nectar. And when that nectar enters into the ear and to the heart then one becomes transformed and one actually begins pure devotional service. So the idea is to associate with the Lord. And then this is the best and most easy and the most highly recommended way to associate with Krishna is to glorify Krishna. It's interesting. Sometimes you see we maybe have that experience where one person is talking to another person and they're talking about the good qualities of another person or something good about that person, something favorable. And just so happens that person appears <laughs> or somehow or other he's in the area, or she's in the area. It's not by accident that happens because that glorification of a person's qualities and activities immediately pulls that person and in, into towards that energy you can imagine when you do it with krishna he becomes personally present quickly when the devotees take time to glorify him and the association with the lord through the glorification of the lord uh, is the way back home back to godhead we should not waste time in doing, finding some satisfaction speaking about something material. Because material things, they have a beginning and an end. They also may appear to be pleasing in the beginning, but after some time they change because it's material. In other words, the newness and the nature of anything material is that it loses its attraction after some time. It doesn't matter who you are, it'll work the same way for everyone. So this is the formula. We, was, we need to think about, you know, we have so many activities in devotional service but here is the essence and krishna makes that clear like that people in the material world are they have material hankerings i want to succeed in this area of life whether it's about relationships or it's about achieving some position or about accomplishing some activity People have material desires, but as soon as they come 
the whole atmosphere changes and they forget. We've had many experiences in our Krishna consciousness movement where devotees have had difficulties with each other. And then when they're somehow together in kirtan, that all those difficulties seem to not even exist ever. They've, they're completely forgotten about. And one is experiencing the happiness of being with others and glorifying the Lord. This is the power of Krishna consciousness. It's all based on proper sense gratification. Uh, proper, pap, it's all based on the principle of glorification of the Lord. Well, that's um, and so this particular, and here we go back to the early part of this verse, or in the very the, the actual verse itself. Uh, here it says. Not only that, when the pure topics of the transcendental world are discussed, not only, but the people who are involved, they longer are not envious of one another. The envy is gone, no? They don't suffer from anxiety or fear. It's not about somehow maintaining these things. These things automatically disappear through the process of hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. So uh, devotees sometimes, there was one very senior devotee. He uh, was in charge of one very large yatra. And um, the members of the yatra devotees were coming to him with personal problems. And so he was trying to deal with the problems, but he was finding that even though he was making an attempt to try to help people, it didn't seem like they were able to accept his mood or his solution. And so what he did is he was thinking, I'm going to give classes on the holy name and that's all I'm gonna give, just classes on the holy name. And simply by doing that, he explained, and he explained to me also personally, that 50%, more than 50% of the problems were gone. So here, and this works across the board. You have any problems? Chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> That's all. It's not recommended as a means for solving problems, but because the holy name is Krishna himself, wherever the holy name is, there's no problems. <laughs> it's just the way it works. And so that is, that, is our, that is our mood. To somehow or other uh, find opportunities to glorify the all good glorification, of, the glorify of the Lord. Krishna is all good. Tell this verse. Material hankerings are forgotten about. Envious no longer exists. No people don't suffer from fear and anxiety. That's there everywhere, especially now. People are very anxious. So we have a lot to experience. In the material world there, people are, have all these problems. They have problems with envy, over, uh, overly addicted to material activities, anxiety because of that, fear because of, of uh, un, uh, not knowing what will happen next and contemplating that. But as soon as one brings Krishna's holy name into the situation, everything changes, becomes so nice. So make that a formula, chant more and more to hold kirtan programs. Now we are in the middle of this kirtan week or two weeks actually. 
and uh, there will be opportunities to get out and chant the holy names. So do that and find and find and find yourself. Okay, so these are some of the basic points of this particular verse. I will read the translation again. Whenever, whenever pure topics of the transcendental world are discussed, the members of the audience forget all kinds of material hankerings, at least for the time being. Not only that, they're no longer envious of one another, nor do they suffer from anxiety or fear. Everyone except suffers from anxiety and fear, but not those who take to this process as described here. Okay, we can see. We are just about to the half hour. So we can open it up for some discussions related to the verse. Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Devotees, if you have any questions, comments, verbalization, anything, uh, please unmute yourself and ask, or maybe just type it in the chat box and I'll read it for you. Thank you. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, I have a question. When okay. it says at least for the time being, what does it mean by at least for the time being? It means while they're doing it, while they're engaged in these activities, all these negativities, all these anarthas, all these bad qualities disappear. Okay. When so you stop, are... Sometimes when we stop, all these things return. Ah, okay, Guru Maharaj, yeah, that makes sense. So it doesn't go permanently, basically. Um, the process it doesn't go permanently. The process has to continue for us to completely be completely purified. Like well, yeah. I mean, some people are free from these things and they experience ecstasy immediately. But mm -hmm. for us who still are somewhat contaminated by these lower qualities then um, they'll remain, at least they'll be put aside for some time. And maybe when they do return, they will return in the same intensity. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, dear Gurudev. Please, Mr. Mahabhavest is our Lord Sushila Prabhupada. I really uh, thank you very much for the all the, for the chanting as well. Uh, class yesterday it was amazing, and uh, I was just listening to it, and it always reminds me of all the small details and how to chant purely. And this is really a valuable lesson that you were saying about glorifying the Lord, because I think that this is like two things that usually devotees kind of um uh, put aside or think it's less valuable is to pray, as you said, for chanting is like really important to pray before the chanting and also to glorify the Lord. Uh, as actually it's such a potent and it's really amazing and potent uh, uh, thing to do and uh, it's really easy to do and when actually most of the time Maharaj when I read about these <clears throat> prayers from different personalities here of Shira Bhagavatam it, they are not kind of a inventing something new they are actually mostly repeating the same points in different ways so it's even not hard to glorify the Lord isn't it we have any comment maybe or something Anyway, uh, it's really valuable. So if anyone has any question, uh, I think this is this would be a better one. Good, good, good. Devotees, is there any other questions you have?
Gurudev, it doesn't look like there are any other questions. Vrindavan Nath. Vrindavan Nath has his hand up. Go on, Prabhu. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisance. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Vrindavan Nath. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Guru Maharaj, I have uh, one question related to this chapter, if I can ask. Um, here, uh, Krishna has mentioned to Pracheta that if whoever offers me the prayers composed by Lord Shiva, both in the morning and in the evening, will be given benedictions by me. So what are those prayers, Guru Maharaj? Because Prabhupada has referred Bhagavad Gita in the purport. What are those prayers? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Like it's mentioned, the prayers of, composed by Lord Shiva. So Prabhupada has mentioned in purport that oh, Bhagavad yeah. Gita. Right, Shiva. Yeah. So that if you go back to chapter twenty-four of the Bhagavatam, you'll find those prayers. The whole chapter twenty-four. Ah, okay. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yes. Srimad Bhagavatam, Srimad Bhagavatam, fourth canto, same canto, twenty-fourth uh, chapter. It's a long chapter. There's almost seventy verses in there. All prayers by Lord Shiva to Lord Vishnu. Jai, Jai. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Mm -hmm. And also, Guru Maharaj, in this verse, like uh, thirty-five verse. Uh, like when speak, we up are... a, speak up a little louder. It's a little hard to hear. Uh, Guru Maharaj, is this better? Guru Maharaj? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. So in even in the same verse, verse number 35, Guru Maharaj, when uh, Lord is saying wherever transcendental activities are discussed, uh, there is no enviousness and all good atmosphere there. Uh, that's the reason, Guru Maharaj, when we say Satatam, uh, kirtanam, so like we should chant or do uh, glorification of Lord every time. That means that's the reason that if we do go in that mode, uh, we may be away from all these bad qualities and bad activities. That's the question. Uh, Guru Maharaj's question was that in the same verse, when Lord is saying wherever transcendental activities are discussed, there is no, uh, like atmosphere is purified and all enviousness and everything is removed. So is that the reason when we are saying, uh, like Lord has mentioned in Bhagavad Gita and other places, so to, uh, we should chant every time, we should try to chant every time and remember Lord. And if we are in that mood, then probably atmosphere will be purified and we will be purified. Yeah. No doubt. No doubt. Yes, everyone becomes purified. The chanter, those who hear, even those who are in the area, in the area get some mercy also. Very powerful. This is our this is our process. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Hare Krishna. I'll go. Remember, try to do something for this holy name session coming that is uh, upon us. Get involved with another group of devotees and go out and do something. Sure, Guru Maharaj. Guru Maharaj, there are no more questions now. Oh, okay. 
Should we close the call? 10.34, my time. So uh, let's see, let's see if there's some more questions. So I wanted to say, Guru Maharaj, we had Croydon Rathyatra today. It went very well. It was so nice. So many devotees got engaged and it was very, very nice. We distributed lots of books and prashad. It was amazing. Devotees, if you have any comments, anything on this verse, a specific verse, or anything actually you want to talk about or ask Guru Maharaj? Reva Kishori Mataji. Yeah, Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Um, please accept my humble obeisances. August to Prabhupada, August to you. Guru Maharaj, uh, thank you for the class. Uh, I actually have a question, not from this verse. If you give permission, may I ask you? Yes, please. Guru Maharaj, um, I'm a little bit confused and seek clarification on the difference between sin and aparad. Uh, I was listening to the Nectar of Devotion lecture on chapter 2 where the cycle of sin is described, like the kutam, the bijam, the prarabdha, and aprarabdha, right. uh, all because of avidya. But then uh, in the lecture, it is stated that uh, we can, uh, as long as we don't commit aparad, uh, so like, for example, Vaishnava aparad and a sinful activity, Gurvaj, what is the difference between the two? Well, both are against bhakti, both will sin is sin is the moral the immoral activities of the living entities in the material world and that's defined in different ways mm -hmm. aparad is also defined in the service for different specific ways but aparads are more serious than sins sins can be relieved quite easily by just by the process of devotional service but Aparads may also stay longer, or the effects of the aparads can stay longer. So they're more they're considered to be more serious. The word aparad comes from the word, if you see it spelled out, it's A P A R A D H A. And now you see the last five letters are Radha. And so aparad means against pure devotional service, representative represented by Radharani. So it's a little more serious. That's how it's understood that uh, one should be very careful to avoid uh, sins. Sometimes we make a mistake. We commit some sin. You know, there are sins according to religious principles. So maybe one day we, uh, you know, we somehow slip and take some intoxication by mistake or something. So that is, that's sinful, but that's not considered so serious in effect. But if one commits an aparad towards Krishna or towards Krishna's devotees, then that will stay longer and the effects will bring one away from Krishna consciousness. So one has to be very aware to avoid aparads. Okay. It's like if you sometimes Prabhupada said, by wrong association, you commit, an, you commit a sinful activity just because of past habits and you're back in the old association again. So because of that association, uh, one is led to commit a mistake or a sinful activity in that association. But I mean, we want to avoid that and it does impact upon our devotional service in a negative way. But at the same time, it is not as serious as an aparad. So when you make the comparison, and that's also mentioned in the nectar devotion, that aparads are more difficult or have more of a negative effect upon our devotional life. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. So okay. Vash spending a Vaishnava is an aparad. Whereas uh, by accidentally somebody takes an intoxicant, that's a sin. Yeah, that's a sin, but it's uh, it's uh, forgivable simply by not doing it again. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Guru Maharaj. Are you going to Gita Nagri soon? 
Yes, Guru Maharaj, I'm going the uh, next weekend. I'm working this weekend, but next weekend I'm going. Guru Maharaj, will you be coming? Yeah, I'm coming to Gita Nagari, I think, right after next weekend. Not this weekend. After the next weekend. So Love. I'll let you know my schedule, but I'll be there maybe at, towards the end of the month. <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj, please let me know. I'll be waiting. Good. Uh, Thank you. Uh, I have one more question, but but I would like to give chance to my other God family. <laughs> so. I don't think there's a lineup for questions today for some reason. <laughs> so I but think I, you, you can go ahead. Sorry, Guru Maharaj, to jump from one because I've been carrying this question for a little bit time now. Um, Guru Maharaj, we studied Chatur Shloki Bhagavad Gita for 10.8, 9, 10, and 11. Right. And then the three shloki Bhagavad Gita, which is like 15th chapter, verse 16, 17, and 18. Uh, so in 8 to 11, in 10 chapter, in the Chatur Shloki, it is easy to explain the Sambandha Vidya Prayojan principle uh, if, just by reading the verses. But I'm not able to connect Sambandha Vidya Prayojan principle on uh, on the 15 chapter 16 17 and 18 verse uh, can you please teach me like how do i connect those principles in that three shloki bhagavad gita in 15 chapter i'd have to look i have to see the the the, uh, the verses uh, um, before i can really give you a, a complete and correct uh, statement so uh, if you want to put the verses up uh, Yes, Guru Maharaj, I'm just opening the Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita, 15th chapter, verses 16, 17, and 18. Yes, Guru Maharaj. And that, that's um, Sambandha, Abhidaya, and Prayojana, right? Yes, Guru Maharaj. So this is 16, 15.16. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The classes of beings, the fallible and the infallible. Mm -hmm. So um, Prayogen, uh, Sambandha means connection or relationship. Yes, Guru Maharaj. So you can see there are two categories of relationships, those who are fallible and those who are infallible. So connecting with those who are fallible, infallible connects you to the spiritual world. So that is some bundle there. Well, here, Shara Sarvani Bhutani. This is about relationships, relationships with the un infallible or those who are on the spiritual platform. Okay, so relationship with the spiritual world in 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 relation to the spiritual world, I, I'm fallible. Yeah. The Siddhas are yeah. infallible. Okay. Yeah, so you have two relationships. You have the material relationship and you have the spiritual relationship. Distinguished, a, a, distinction, a distinction has been made between the two mm -hmm. uh -huh. for the sake of connection, for the sake of connection. Okay. Okay, and 17. So then the next one is the Abhideya, right? Uh, yes, Guru Maharaj. Okay. There, besides these two, there is the greatest living person on the Supreme Lord and Parish who has entered the three world. So, Abhideya is the process of devotional service.
So here the super soul is mentioned or the Paramatma who is seated within the heart. So devotional service means to connect with the Supreme Personality of Godhead who is manifested in three forms as impersonal Brahman, Paramatma and Bhagavan. So here he is mentioned as the localized aspect of the Supreme Lord in everyone's heart. So our devotion goes towards the Lord. And that is the process. Mm -hmm. Our activities go towards the Lord. The last line says, one who understands him is eligible for perfect peace. Understanding him means to uh, engage in the service of the Lord. Krishna says, you can't understand me unless you actually engage in devotional service. Only those who engage in devotional service can know me. Mm -hmm. Yes, Guru Maharaj. And then the next one. Because I am transcendental both to the infinite and because I am the greatest, I am self in the world, the greatest is that supreme person. So the goal of all activities is to develop love for Krishna. Mm -hmm. This verse is very hard to see the actual goal. Again, the Supreme Person Krishna is being, is being explained as in relationship to the two previous verses. He's transcendental to the infallible, infallible. And because he is, I can't see because the, it's, you have to move the verse down, move the verse down. Because I'm, he said, because I am the greatest, I am celebrated in the world and the Vedas as that supreme personality. So this, these verses help us to focus away from the material and onto Krishna, which is the process of pure devotional service. Connecting with Krishna, serving Krishna, and getting the, be the benefit of the service to Krishna, which is... A devotion to Krishna or love for Krishna. So um, I'm not exactly, I can't see Prayojana in this particular last verse part. I just don't see it. You're sure that these three verses are synonymous with these three principles you mentioned? Um. Guru Maharaj, I can share the reference uh, uh, where I saw uh, that these are the uh, three verses which are mentioned as three shloki Bhagavad Gita, 15, 16, and uh, uh, I'm sorry, 16, 17, and 18th of the 15th chapter. Yes, I did not understand it how, but that's the reference I have. Uh, what, 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 how are they described? Uh, so same way that uh, uh, 16 they're saying is Sambandha, 17 is Avidya and 18 is uh, Prayojan, but I don't understand how. Well, uh, Prayojan can be understood a little bit here in the sense that there's, there's no other goal in life but Krishna. <laughs> okay. Tama is very significant. No one can surpass the Supreme Personality of God. Okay. Uh, I still find it hard to see it, but it's if that's what it says, then it's there. You have to read the commentaries by the Acharyas. Baladev Vidyabhushan has written a commentary on the Bhagavad Gita. Um, if you're going to give me about two or three minutes, no, I don't think... I have the book here. The book's not available. But there is a book on the commentaries or the a, a book on of commentaries on the Bhagavad Gita. The surrender unto me, I have that, uh, but not that's, on 
that's there, but one by the Acharyas. Mm -hmm. Okay. Guru Maharaj, this was in my Bhakti Shastri, and I have the lecture of, uh, they shared the lecture of uh, His Holiness Suhutra Swami from June 1992 in Radha Desh. I did not understand what what uh, Maharaj is trying to say. So I understand you well. So that's why I put forward the question. But I'm happy to email it to you if you give permission. Yeah, please. Okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, I'll try to I'll try to find more information related to these verses that helps to clarify. Uh, thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Hare Krishna. <laughs> Hare Krishna Mataji, I have, I have sent a book name which Guru Maharaj uh, mentioned in the chat for you um, by Baldev uh, Vidya Bhushni, uh, commentary, um, Bhagavad Gita commentary on from him. Thank you, uh, Mataji. Thank you so much. Guru Maharaj, do you recommend that we read this book? Uh, by Baladev? Yes, Guru Maharaj. As a reference, yeah. Whenever you need to find out uh, a particular uh, commentary, which is a, a deeper understanding of the verse, you can go to these references. We do that with Bhagavatam, with Gita, with Gita. It's not something you read. It's something you refer to when you want to know about a particular verse. Uh, okay, thank you very much. You can read it too, but it really won't. You'd have to read Bhagavad Gita side by side as you're reading that. Um, yes, Guru Maharaj. Understood. Thank mm -hmm. you. Hari. Thank you, Satya Mamati. Any more questions out there? Devotees, do you have any other questions? Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Gurudev. This is Madame Gopal Das. Hare Gopal. Hare Krishna. Um, my question is, we, we know that we have to chant 16 rounds and follow the four regs, but what if... Uh, Every day is like different. Um, you know, one day we're really enthusiastic and then the next day it's almost like we got hit in the face with a brick wall or we don't even feel like chanting or something. I mean, I always like to chant the holy name, but every day is can be different. I mean, like, Yeah, we're being infected by the modes of material and nature. The modes are working. And sometimes the modes are favorable and sometimes they're unfavorable. So we have to get beyond these modes by just staying fixed in the instructions. You know, whether it's, you know, a brick wall or a, a sweet smelling garden, it doesn't really change our determination to chant. We just have to use a little extra effort or maybe a greater amount of prayer when we find that the modes are more stronger. So don't be discouraged by that. It's an opportunity to make advancement. It doesn't mean because it's more difficult, you get, le you get less benefit on it. In fact, most of the time when it's more difficult, when you stay with it and try to uh, you know, perfect your chanting despite the added amounts of, you know, difficulties, you make greater advancement. There are opportunities. And see, uh, fair weather devotees are when things are nice, they're there. And when it's not, can't find them. That's not devotional service. That's simply seeing things in a material way. As long as we still have an art, this, and as long as the modes are, you know, there, you're going to find ups and downs 
and your chanting and everything you do, there'll be ups and downs. Once you reach the platform of Nishta and many of the Anarthas are removed, then you're steady. And even if there is ups and downs, there's, they're quite small. They're not like a brick wall. Yes, getting to that Nishta stage is, is very difficult, but that's the goal for, for sure. Yeah, well, nishta, means, nishta means firm faith. You're fixed. Why should how we feel or how the modes are working uh, discourage us or even encourage us? We, should, we don't even care about those things. We just focus on our service, on our duty, on our responsibilities, and go for it. If we're looking for happiness in devotional service, we'll be disappointed. Happiness comes when you don't look for it. Happiness comes by way of the when the Lord is pleased. Don't try to be happy. Just try to serve. That's all. <laughs> You'll be happy if you just serve. That's all. <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj. Uh, everything you're saying is is so true, but. I feel like I've been brainwashed, you know, the way we were brought up in the West and, uh, you know, our parents, the way they brought us up and That's teachers, what friends. Krishna consciousness means to overcome these things. We're getting purified from these things. How I feel, why should it, why should how I feel matter so much? <laughs> I know. I don't want it to. I want it to go away. Like, I know I'm a spirit soul, but this you body focus, keeps... You focus you on know. the service, then. It'll go away if you focus on the activity. I think that's the problem, is trying to... I have a hard time focusing on anything. Well, then practice. Prabhupada said devotional service is practice. You have to practice. You see what, what was it like when you did it, and then when a situation arises again, you prepare yourself to uh, you know be ready for the different challenges. Exactly. This is the material world. And material world means difficulties, means obstacles, means reverses. Yeah, but I see like with my wife, um, she's like more in the mode of goodness and has divine qualities. But then when I read about the demoniac qualities, I see most of those are in me. So I can <laughs> see how it could be, it can be a struggle to for some devotees in Krishna conscious because they're more like inclined to the other side than the bright side. So you you and your wife together make up the 16th chapter, huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that's the idea of having a good wife. That you're you're in good association then. Oh yes, definitely Guru Maharaj. So she brings you up and she, she can not only bring you up, but she can keep you, she can move you forward. If you see how she's acting or how she's developing those or practicing those qualities, then you can also practice too. Imitation of the right thing is, is good. Yes, Gurudev. Just imitate her, that's all. I'm good at imitating others. So yeah, I just have to imitate the right people. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay, Vrindavan Nath, did you have your hand up also? Uh, Madan, I'm coming out your way sooner or later. So get ready. Oh, Govinda. Okay, yes, Guru Maharaj. I'll be in contact. Yeah. That'll come in October.
I'm praying I can see you during your USA visit. Okay, any other questions? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, I have one question if I can. Ask. Yes, please. We are Guru ready. Maharaj, we this are ready question is, so Guru Maharaj, this question is also related to Bhagavad Gita. So uh, normally it's considered this Chatur Shloki, 10.8 uh, to 11, as Mataji was saying, as essence of Bhagavad Gita. But Guru Maharaj, uh, 11.55, uh, where it highlights five critical qualities looks like and Prabhupada has also mentioned as a essence of Bhagavad Gita and looks that's looks very very powerful uh, verse uh, so which like how to take that Guru Maharaj comparing 1155 to what verse uh, to Chatur Shloki 10.8 to 11 Guru Maharaj yeah a lot of the times the, the principles are repeated in the, in the different different statements by Krishna if you want to really uh, uh, develop in your spiritual life, you need to hear the same thing presented, maybe in a slightly different way or even in the same way. So we shouldn't think they're different. They're just a repetition, that's all. They're never contrary. They're just emphasizing. The 18th chapter is a summary of the whole Bhagavad Gita. <clears throat> yes, Guru Maharaj. Mm -hmm. Thank you, yeah. Guru Maharaj. It's just repeated, that's all. Yeah. Like in one verse, Guru Maharaj, it's very powerful saying all these five points that focus on pure devotional service keep Krishna as the highest supreme goal of life. Then third, uh, like be friendly to every living being. Fourth, yeah. do every activity to Krishna service. So, and yeah. Live in the dham. Arindavanath is not Prabhu. Fifth, live in the dham. Mathura or Vrindavan. <laughs> no, fifth is here. Mataji mentioned that no association with uh, negative influence or any Sangh Varjita. So, no association with any uh, wrong devotee. So, those five mentioned in this verse, Mataji. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. All right. My obeisances to everyone. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada, Ki Jai. Okay, Satyabhama. Guru Maharaj. Yes. Should we close? I think so. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, we'll close the call now. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj, for your time and association. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Guru Maharaj.